you take a, kind of a, a deep dive approach to, to conducting some focus groups and key leader stakeholder meetings, but also some virtual public meetings, typically these are the folks that are users of your system or and or they're aware of your system um, and their users. Uh, and so the other components that we'll dive into also are online surveys, intercept surveys, going to city uh, special events um, to get people's um, feedback as well as statistically valid survey. This helps us to get not just users but also um, non-users. Uh, one big component of a master plan is to really understand what folk, why folks aren't using your system, why they're not taking advantage of the experiences, because you want to try and not just continue to do the same things for the same people, especially in a community that's growing and becoming more diverse, such as yours. So regarding the statistically valid survey, um, I can send you a three-page document that likely would put you to sleep, um, but this is very algorithm-based, uh, and uh, we expect this to take place in the spring, this spring, um, March, April, and May. Um, we're going to get 300, a minimum of 375 completed surveys from, from 375 different households. In order for this to be statistically valid, it has to be demographically and geographically representative of your community. So where you have more people living in your community, we would expect to have more survey results. Where you have less people, you'll have less survey. Again, 375 is a minimum. Um, we will also not just dive into the results of these surveys from a city-wide perspective, but we're gonna look at it through three different geographies. Um, and uh, so we're kind of dividing your community up east-west, um, but then also on the east side of your community, dividing it north-south. Um, so we will end up with not just understanding the needs of your community as a whole, but kind of understanding the, the different areas of your community, different growth patterns, old, uh, older neighborhoods, um, growth areas, to get an understanding of how those needs are different in, in the different ge geographical areas of your community. So there will be a number of cross tabulations by household type, but also by geography as well. So we are going to do um, a full-blown what we'll call public and leadership engagement strategy. Um, and what this means is there is going to be a lot of information that comes out of this master plan. <coughs> Long story short, we don't want to talk to you all now and then talk to you in December. Um, we want to talk to the community, to staff, to the Park and Rec Advisory Board, and to you all at various stages of the project so that... It, we can kind of break the project down into what we'll call digestible chunks and get your feedback along the way so that when we get to the end of the project, we will have turned over every stone. We'll have had every conversation along the way. And so um, we're committed to kind of doing five, di uh, what we'll call five different milestones, but a, a series of meetings within each of those um, that includes um, policy leaders such as yourself, um, to the community as a whole. So all of this will ultimately start to prioritize your needs, um, and both in terms of the programs and services that are desired by your community, but also the park and rec facilities and amenities that are needed to support those experiences. One thing that will I'll say now, two things I'll say now about the needs, um, Number one, there are going to be things on the facility side of the equation that don't have a direct correlation to programs and services. Walking on a trail is not a program and a service. It's a self-directed activity, but you need trails in order for the community to do that. So there won't be this one-to-one -one correlation between high priority, medium priority, low priority between programs and services and facilities and amenities. Um, the other thing that I'll point out is that there are going to be things that fall into the low priority um, that you might be surprised to see are in the low priority. Um, one of the things that we start to look at when we think about low priority is simply that the reason it kind of comes out as a lower priority is simply because it's either a very age-specific activity, sports, um, kids' sports, youth soccer, 
um, or it's a very special interest. Um, and it doesn't mean that we don't do those things that are in the low priority. It's just that you're, you have a, a tight audience, target market audience for it, and or you have to strategically do that. So I brought up the skate park. You're not gonna put a skate park in every park, but you're gonna have one, maybe two, so that are geographically balanced in your community, even though it may come out as a low priority. Um, we are also going to look at this and commend Steve um, with regards to this as well, to look at um, your operational bucket. So senior center, rec center, library, golf course, and then general programming. We're gonna evaluate all of those different divisions through different lenses because their operations are different and their uh, target audiences are different. So we will um, obviously be performing operational program and service assessments, but operational assessments for each one of those specific buckets. Um, and, and give you an understanding of, of how um, close to best practice you're operating, um, understand what uh, staff's doing well, and where there are opportunities for improvement. The other bucket that we're gonna look at is park maintenance. Um, and this is absolutely critical. Uh, very different operation than the others that I described, simply because this is about maintaining public spaces uh, and parks and facilities the programs and services that take place in parks and facilities are typically only as good as the maintenance that takes place in those parks and facilities. Uh, I always say that you could decide that you're going to have a wedding shower for somebody. First thing you think about is the location in which you're going to do that. And typically you're going to want to find a location that you know is safe and clean and in repair. Parks are the exact same way. We have to ensure that you have a strong park and ground maintenance program. So there's a whole different level of standards um, and evaluation that will go into this as well. Um, we are conducting, actually have already conducted an inventory and assessment. Kimberly Horn has done that already. Um, and we're certainly going back and forth with staff right now to um, ground truth and ensure that all of the information regarding your existing system um, is taking place. So this is just some information from the city of Chandler, but it gives you an understanding of, um, uh, of the kind of information that will come out of this from an amenity perspective, uh, as well as an overarching theme perspective when it comes to park amenities and park maintenance. Um, we're also going to um, dive into what we'll call level of service. So we are very impressed right now with the amount of acreage, of park acreage, and the facilities that you provide to your community. Um, and what we're anticipating coming out of this is to say that you have a current level of service. In other words, X number of park acres for every thousand people. Um, given the fact that your community is A, going to continue to grow, but you also have undeveloped parkland, we're not anticipating coming out of this that we're going to change your level of service. What we're going to do is to recommend that as you go forward, um, that you, you look to develop the parkland um, that is currently undeveloped in the ways that your community wants to utilize it the most, um, and or in, in concert with, with other potential development that is gonna be taking place on any of those sites. So uh, we want to ensure that we right size your level of service. Um, we're big on ensuring that you have implementable, realistic and financially sustainable recommendations around this. And it doesn't make sense for us to give you recommended levels of service that you, you can't sustain going forward. So we will also in turn um, map um, all of your park areas, amenities, and understand how balanced you are in terms of providing services to your community, from neighborhood parks to community parks to regional parks to even ramadas, playgrounds. Um, this will be um, extremely important that when we start getting into looking at what needs to go into your undeveloped parkland, um, not just needs of the community, but also ensuring that you have equitable access to the, um, the experiences that your community wants. Um, we are gonna conduct a connectivity analysis. 
Uh, we are going to identify missing trail segments, um, opportunities to expand the trail system, and then prioritize those opportunities. Uh, the, the foundational piece of this is going to be your existing trails plan. But we, we don't want to just assume that your trails plan um, is at the end of the day, the end all be all for your trail system because we know that you're going to be developing future parkland. So there may be opportunities to incorporate trail recommendations that aren't in your park, in your, in your trail plan, simply because of the parkland that you're going to develop in the future. Um, this is just an example of work that we did in Oro Valley, um, where we identified uh, almost the full alphabet's worth of, of possible trail segmentations, and then we put some costs to this. Um, Oro Valley did um, not have the uh, financial threshold to incorporate all of these within the next 10 years, so we did end up prioritizing the top five or six for them to focus on going forward. And then, as I mentioned, um, you do have undeveloped parkland, um, and so uh, we are going to look to develop concept plans. Um, this is, again, is another example of something from Oro Valley. Um, but potentially, um, we've identified three potential sites um, for these concept plans, one of them being at the Recreation Center, um, possibly opportunities to expand aquatics since that was not um, acted upon as part of the uh, existing recreation center project. But we'll end up developing concept plans and providing cost estimates for you. There will be opportunities for the public to weigh in on these concept plans um, along the way uh, so that we in turn can make sure that what ends up being in the master plan is representative of what your community wants. And then we are going to do cost estimating for capital improvements. We're not going to give you a capital improvement plan that you feel like as part of a master plan you're adopting as part of your budget process. It's just going to be cost estimates for all of these improvements. Um, but that said, this entire plan is going to be rooted in what we call total cost of ownership. So you have a capital improvement. That's one-time money. Sometimes that comes from the general fund. Sometimes it comes from other taxing sources. Sometimes it comes from grants, but that's one-time dollars. We have to ensure that you have the operations and maintenance dollars to support those capital improvements. Um, and that is usually where the rub starts to make sure that we're creating financially realistic and sustainable um, plans and recommendations for you. On the, the other side is, is that anything that you build doesn't last forever. Um, so there's always a life cycle replacement component to this. And this is going to be something extremely important for us to um, continue to talk about as we go through this process. There are going to be opportunities in your system to just replace playgrounds um, or just replace ramadas or replace athletic field lighting. Um, but none of that happens all at the same time. And so as we make recommendations to you, we're going to look at all of these costs to ensure that you know kind of what you're getting yourself into in terms of one-time dollars, um, what you need to appropriate annually from an operations and maintenance perspective, and then also just keeping an eye on the future when it comes to life cycle replacement. So we will then create this um, cost estimating capital improvement plan in three buckets. The first bucket is just life cycle replacement. What in your existing system needs to be life cycle replaced over the next 10 years? Just because this master plan is going to have a 10-year planning horizon does not mean, though, that come year 11, you're done with life cycle replacement. It is a continual and perpetual thing associated with a park system. The second bucket is looking at your existing park system and identifying opportunities for improvement without having to develop raw land. So it could be loop trails, it could be additional picnic shelters, it could be playgrounds, could be skate parks. Um, this allows us an opportunity to say, how can, you, how can you make the most of what you have already to better meet community needs, and in turn have those parks utilized even more. And then lastly, there's the visionary bucket. This is likely going to be where the concept plans fall in. Um, these are going to be um, the undeveloped park acreage um, and the plans and the costs associated with it. Typically, um, the third bucket is the most expensive bucket. The first bucket is kind of in the middle of the road. 
The second bucket is kind of the least expensive. Um, but the nice part as we go through this process is, is you'll have opportunities fr from this park system master plan to, at the end of the day, understand how to improve your existing system while at the same time building new and prioritize that. And then ultimately we create this kind of summary. Um, again, I think this was from Oro Valley. Uh, it was a little steep. Um, uh, we ended up having to cut it back, but at the end of the day, um, it gives you an understanding going in um, what that total cost uh, estimating plan looks like. And then the key, um, and this is the give and take, um, is the funding strategy specific to your city. What can you afford? What funding strategies do you have to support each and every project um, so that we can create implementable and sustainable recommendations for you? So our overall um, project timeline, um, meeting series number one, uh, we are gonna kind of round that out with a virtual community meeting um, via Zoom on February 16th. Um, the meeting series two is uh, gonna be in May, June, and this is really gonna be public needs and park and facility assessments. So this is reporting back to the community what we heard from you all, as well as the state of your existing park system. Meeting series three, key technical findings. That's the level of service. That's when we start getting into the mapping and we start diving into the concept plans. Meeting series four is everything kind of coming all together with regards to the cost estimating on the capital improvement side, the operational assessments, um, and then start to craft out the implementation plan. So that when we get to meeting series five, which is basically adoption, um, as I said before, we'll be in a position where you'll kind of have heard that all before. So I, at this point, can take any questions, concerns, comments, suggestions you may have. Mr. Powell? One of the things I, I will mention is a lot of the trails are cement sidewalks is what they are. Yeah. <clears throat> and for equestrians and, and some of the mountain bikers and stuff like that, they need to have areas that they can use also the same way. And then we've got a jewel out there at North Mountain Park. If we would do more with it, it's, it's got a lot of ability to, to bring people out. Great, thank you. Lisa? And to kind of piggyback, of course, making sure we get to a wide range of people in the community is important. You know, if this yep. is a plan that's gonna carry us through the next 10 years, you know, you know, making sure that we get that representation on the on the feedback is really critical. So, and that was my question: is you know, you know, are you going to go into the community and specifically the surveys? Is it going to be Spanish language as well? Are you going to try to get into the communities to make sure that we're getting feedback from a wide range of people, not just one particular neighborhood or or um, you know part of our community. So I just wanted to make sure that it's diverse and we're getting feedback from a, a broad Yes, that's the, I, I would agree. And um, we, we can't slide, move forward if we don't feel like we have good, represent, good representation mm -hmm. from your community as a whole, correct? Right. Anybody else? Looks good. Um, mm -hmm. When we get the schedule a little more solidified, would you make sure that the council gets a copy of that? Sure, okay. sure. Thank you. I, I think some of us would like to be there or help participate. Yeah, for instance, our community meeting is February 16th. I'll make sure you have a link to, it's a, it's a virtual meeting. Right, saw that. It's on the council calendar. Yeah. We'll separate it from the calendar. <laughs> Send us the Zoom link. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're very thank welcome. You. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, appreciate it. Steve, anything else? No. Okay. Great. You know, I would Thank one you. more thing, which I always do with you. Yes, Mr. Powell. If you go down Rodeo Road and across the wash, there's an Indian village on federal land that's historic. It's been there. There's, there's uh, a village you can actually see if it rains, you can see the walls of what was there at one time. Uh, when Jim was here, he checked with ASU, but we've never known how to how to make that available to other people. So that might be something to put on your list. <laughs> okay. That'd be an interesting addition. All right. We'll go to the next item then on our, uh, on our list, which is a uh, discussion with the city manager on our capital improvement projects.
Mr. Raines. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, appreciate the opportunity to present this evening on our City of Casa Grande Capital Improvement Program. And as you can tell by the presentation, it is somewhat broad in what is actually included uh, that I'll be covering this evening. But ultimately, I want to capture three specific sections of our CIP. Number one is uh, an update on our fiscal year 22. Uh, where we're at in that process. I want to speak just uh, briefly on our fiscal year 23, uh, uh, give, give the council a glimpse of our fiscal 23 program. Obviously, that is in the works. The mayor and council will be considering that as part of the annual budget process. And uh, most importantly, I want to talk a little bit about some of our future projects that we're seeing that are uh, ultimately being, uh, being requested in our five-year plan uh, of, of our capital improvement program. And I want to focus a bit on the uh, funding sources for that. And the Mayor and Council may recall that at our earlier retreat in the years we were focused on strategic planning, we had some discussions about the fact that I think Casa Grande has done a fantastic job in building the amenities and the quality of life items on a pay-as-you-go uh, system. And, uh, but as, you, as, as growth transpires in the community and we ultimately need to maintain uh, levels of service and keep up with that growth, uh, there, there will be a potential for us to look at other financing or other financing types in order to achieve that. And tonight I'll talk a little bit about uh, the potential of a general obligation bond and, and get some direction from the mayor and council. I do want you to know that 30 minutes is a very rushed period of time to cover this topic. But I want the mayor and council and the community to rest assured that this is really just the first, the very first step in this process. That ultimately, if if there is some decisions tonight to to have uh, staff continue to develop the concept of other financing, such as general obligation bonds, then the then the next process would be uh, essentially putting more analysis and coming back before council. Uh, in a study session before a decision was made on which items may go on a future ballot. So um, again, I'm it really just a, a, a precursor to the presentation. Let me start let me start by covering the fiscal year 22 update and I have forwarded the mayor and council a, a, a copy of our fiscal year 22 capital projects. I do want the mayor and council to recognize that my the primary, focus that I'll have this evening on our CIP is, is on actual projects themselves. As all of you are aware, we do have uh, what I consider to be a very extensive rep asset replacement program system here at the City of Casa Grande. And as all of you know, when you're adopting the annual budget, you typically are giving some level of authority for us to replace existing assets. I'm not really going to focus on that tonight. This is going to be new capital projects that ultimately are, would be coming into the, into the organization. Um, and so what, I can, what I'd like to do is just start by simply saying that uh, the, the, the good news is, and the mayor and council adopted after staff's, at staff's recommendation, a very, what I consider to be aggressive capital improvement program for fiscal year 22, roughly $70 million worth of capital improvement projects. And as we sit here today, I'm happy to report that we have either achieved and or are underway with approximately $38 million of capital projects in fiscal year 22. Again, all of those are um, being funded on what I consider to be a pay-as-you-go methodology, and I'll talk a little more about that in an upcoming slide. But to give everybody a bit of the context of some of the projects that we've been able to achieve this fiscal year, uh, we've completed Casa Grande Maricopa Highway intersection. We've uh, started the work um, through the procurement of the Santa Rosa Mill and Overlay, which was another uh, road project. We've uh, the Mayor and Council will be uh, considering. I know that you've seen the timeline on the traffic signal at Sunland Gin and Jimmy Kerr. Uh, we've we've uh, done a fair amount of design and are preparing for construction on the Thornton widening project, specifically from Peters to Selma Road. Uh, we've completed the peer improvements, uh, uh, roadway improvement project from O'Neill to Cottonwood, and we are now finalizing some of our plans to do the median landscaping in that area there as well. We've uh, started the interconnect of the traffic signals that, uh, that the Mayor and Council has asked us to focus on. We've, uh, we've authorized a contract on the uh, perimeter land uh, fill berm and drainage. The Mayor and Council did that at a recent Council meeting. We've started the design on the Quartzen Relief Sewer Line. Um, if 
for our sewer, our wastewater treatment plant. We have started the uh, design on the construction of a recharge project uh, for, our waste, for our water reclamation plant. I need to get my definitions, uh, my, my terminology more aligned with my staff. We've purchased the biosolids hauling, at least portions of the biosolids hauling equipment. As you know, with many of these pieces of equipment, vehicular, if you will, there's a, there's a, 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 a significant lag from when we order it from the time we're receiving it. Um, we've, we've done some design on the taxiway extension to serve the airport industrial park. We've, we're uh, real, real close. So Gloria may tell me tonight that we're, we've finished, but we're very close to finishing the Union Pacific Railroad art project on the underpass there. At the end of the month, thank you, Gloria. Um, we're, we're underway with the City Hall security upgrades, as many of you know when you come through City Hall. Uh, we're underway with the, uh, are close to getting underway with the expansions of our communication center at the, uh, at, uh, here for our uh, public safety perso personnel. Uh, we continue to work on our neighborhood's park improvement system, where each year we're actually taking a park and and retrofitting much of the equipment there and, and doing a variety of improvements. Uh, as many of you know, we've uh, taken on uh, the first segment of the, er, of the trail design and development uh, from Rotary Park along the wash uh, to Peart. That has started. Uh, the fire department is well underway with their vehicle cover and fence project. The police department is close to completion on their evidence bay expansion and um, we anticipate bringing a, a contract before the mayor and council on our fire station 503 replacement in the very near term. So when you, when you account for all of those projects, that's roughly $38 million worth of projects that are underway, just to give everybody a, a bit of a context. There's, as, as many of you know, there's still a number of projects that are in the pipeline. Um, some of those will be carried over into our fiscal year 23 budget, depending on the timing. But when you subtract the replacement uh, of vehicles and the various assets that are included in our capital improvement program, you see that we've made we've made pretty good strides in fiscal year 22 for uh, with with this with this program. If there's no questions on the 22 program, I want to just shift quickly to the fiscal 23 program. And again, this is just a bit of a glimpse, uh, simply because we are just in the well, we're about midway through our budget process, and we'll be ultimately. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not advancing the slides. Everybody's wondering what I'm doing here. Um, I just did. <laughs> thanks, Stephen. Uh, we're, we're about midway through our budget process with a budget retreat scheduled in April that will be providing more information for the mayor and council. And quite candidly, some of the feedback that we'll receive tonight and potentially at a future study session will certainly help guide the completion of our capital improvement program. But just to give the mayor and council a context of some of the projects that have been at least uh, uh, introduced at this point is our financial management system replacement, uh, air, airport hangar uh, development. Um, there's, a, there's a heavy emphasis, as I explained to the mayor and council in that strategic uh, uh, planning retreat, there's a heavy emphasis on wastewater, water reclamation improvements in fiscal year. 23 and in future years, uh, it, we're, we're to a point where we have to invest in our wastewater service in order to maintain the level of service and to continue to promote the growth that's been transpiring. A lot of the capacity that we have, that we have so enjoyed over the years is, is really beginning to be a bit depleted because of the amount of industrial uh, economic development prospects that have been coming to the community. So um, I, would, I would say that in fiscal year 23, what we're looking at for a variety of a sewer, sewer line expansion, uh, water reclamation plant expansions, we're, we're probably in the vicinity of about $24 million at this point. That could be a bit higher. We're finalizing a plan that'll be introduced to Mayor and Council in the next couple of months that will really uh, narrow that number down for what the commitment will need to be for fiscal year 23. Um, we also have a very aggressive transportation plan that we're trying to implement. Again, some of that coming with the pay-as-you-go and some of that what I would consider to be uh, we'll be looking for the council's direction on other types of financing and I'll talk a little more about that here in, in a future slide. But that includes projects from uh, very, our, our annual maintenance to uh, Peters Road expansion 
or excuse me, Selma Highway Bridge to um, uh, Desert Valley Mill and Overlay to uh, Cadota Avenue reconstruction to the continuation of Thornton Road widening uh, to uh, Peart Road, Peart Road widening as well as the improvements around the Pinal Tech Park that we're for some of the commitments that we've been making to some of our most recent economic development projects such as Kohler. Um, we're looking to fund the roundabout at Ash and Florence Street in fiscal year 23, uh, reversible lanes on Thornton Road to deal with some of the traffic that we are seeing in our industrial corridor. Uh, and we're looking to begin to implement the Florence Boulevard streetscape project, which by the way, I did not mention that on fiscal year 22. The design of that is underway today. And uh, we'll be looking to uh, essentially, much like what, what was expressed earlier on the Parks Master Plan, which I think is really ideal timing for what we're talking about this evening, is, is ultimately a, a planning document that we can use to build some type of an annual allocation and or seek some type of, uh, of outside financing to accelerate and achieve more of that project in any given year. And so, but we do anticipate uh, starting the uh, various improvements at that point as well. Um, we'll. We'll continue to work on our community trail system. Uh, we'll also continue, continue to implement the update of the parks, uh, projects like replacement of the lights at Paul Mason Sportsplex, golf course improvements, uh, facility improvements that we're anticipating at, at the city as well, uh, as well as the potential of uh, uh, additional fire stations that would be included in that. 501 and 502 uh, re uh, replacements, as well as various fire apparatus that would be, uh, that are, is necessary, and potentially, depending on the outcome of the CON, the purchases of, of ambulances to, uh, to move into that level of service as well. So again, that's just a, that's just a very quick glimpse. Uh, if the mayor and council would like me to uh, elaborate any further on those, then I'd be happy to do so. I think that's a pretty complete list, Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we've we've been quite busy, Mr. Mayor. Just say you guys aren't doing anything, are you? Uh, uh, no. no. <laughs> um, you can tell by the expression on all the directors' face that we've just been we've been having an active game of game of tiddlywinks, right? <laughs> no. The um, so so again, I mentioned this very uh, very briefly, but let me go into a little more depth on really the various financing of capital improvements. The, the methodology that we've used, and I've got another slide that'll talk a little bit about, uh, about how we've used outside financing in the past, and I'll, I'll cover that when I come into, uh, to it in my slideshow presentation. We typically have taken a very conservative pay-as-you-go methodology, and as the mayor and council is, is quite uh, aware, there are a variety of funding sources that can be typically allocated to capital improvement programs. One of the key elements that we always are cognizant from a management perspective is if we build something new or we add a level, uh, a level of service that's going to be increased, what are those operational and maintenance costs going to be in the long term? I know the council is always very, uh, very uh, interested in, in hearing some of that, but we do have general fund uh, that we, we will typically use. Many of the time, these, these are one-time revenues that are, are driven by construction. Uh, that we consider one time. And typically, if, if you really want to get into the accounting functionality of this, there's very few projects that are actually funded directly out of general fund. The majority of the time, the money is transferred out of the general fund and other funds to our capital improvement fund. That is typically where we're going to account for the major capital improvements, uh, which does not really have a funding source unless there is actual monies that are transferred into that fund. But you will see from time to time on our program list that it is funded through the capital improvement program or uh, capital improvement fund. We also fund uh, many of the <coughs> capital improvement programs or projects that are related specifically to our, our utility funds such as water, wastewater and sanitation right out of the enterprise fund itself. Many times the uh, funding source uh, through these enterprise is uh, we're, we're essentially using the revenues that we're generating off the rates that we're charging. So if you have a large capital pr uh, purchase that is going to need to be made within, a, within any future uh, current or future fiscal year, you ultimately have to ensure that your rates are established to, to support that capital improvement and the operation and maintenance thereafter. 
One of, the, one of the key funds that we, actually there's a number of funds that fall into our development impact fee fund, but, but uh, there's a number of various categories ranging from public safety, police and fire, to streets, to, to, to uh, sewer, that are, we're actually collecting revenues which with each uh, house that's built, each residential dwelling that's built in the community and or that ultimately if we've got a, a, an industrial project or a commercial project, when you're bringing in new space to the community and there's an expectation that you're going to be having, you're gonna be utilizing our services, there's a development impact fee that's charged. And fortunately for the city of Casa Grande, we are finding that our development impact fee funds are, are starting to replenish themselves. You know, they, they, they grew, uh, obviously as growth grew in the, mid, in the mid to late 2000s, but when that stopped, obviously impact, development impact fees are gonna be contingent upon the type of growth you have in the community. And so when it slows down, the revenues slow down into those funds. But, what, what, but with the aggressive uh, development that's been happening the last couple of years, we're beginning to see those, those fund balances improve. And ultimately there will be a number of projects that will be recommended for um, to be funded through our development impact fee again that is based primarily on the study that the mayor and council adopts as you set the as you establish the rate and can only be used for specific purposes it cannot be used to replace assets it can't be used to uh, to renovate existing infrastructure it typically has to be a new project many times what you'll find with the development impact fees is that we blend those with other types of funding sources uh, to ensure that we have enough, enough, of, enough funding to get the project completed. And they will become a very important category as we're evaluating some of the future expansion that we need to meet, uh, that we need to achieve in Casa Grande as a, as a result of the growth. There's also special revenue designated, uh, designated funds. Uh, as the mayor and council is aware, we have a uh, sales tax that we charge on recreation for a, a, a local sales tax that we charge specifically and is designated for recreation activities. So many of the park improvements that, uh, that Mr. Hardesty and his team have been achieving the last several years is being funded through this particular funding source. And we also have construction sales tax that is, uh, the, it is the incremental increase uh, that we actually have designated into a separate fund. The mayor and council have designated those specifically for capital improvement projects. And then lastly is bond financing, and we'll spend a little bit of time on that here tonight. There's a number of uh, ways, and I want to make sure that I preserve enough time for the mayor and council to, to ask any questions and for staff to, to respond tonight. And so the primary focus is going to be on general obligation financing tonight. Um, and so as I, as I touch on some of these other financing sources, uh, it'll be very light. Uh, certainly if the mayor and council has any questions, I'd entertain those. But ultimately, um, uh, it, it is a topic that I would look to cover after we receive some of the direction this evening. So a general obligation bond, and, and I mentioned this, I'm gonna kind of give it away a little bit here. I've got a future slide that talks about Casa Grande's general obligation bond uh, issuances that we've done uh, and the questions that we've posed to our voters in an upcoming slide. But quite frankly, I will tell you that one of the things that I'm most impressed with about Casa Grande is that we have expanded the level of service and built a number of the amenities and facilities that we have in the community through other financing sources. Geo, geo bonds have, have been used in specific, for specific types of, of uh, projects. And, um, and so we had done an, our initial bond, I believe was in 1983 or 84, when the city asked our voters <coughs> to consider uh, allowing capacity to buy a fire, a fire truck, a fire pumper. Uh, we, upon paying that off 20 years thereafter, staff began to discuss the concept with the mayor and council and ultimately took a bond question, several bond questions to the council that really focused, or to the community, that really focused on quality of life amenities, our rec center, the public safety facility, the renovations of the Lynn Cola, improvements to the Dave White golf course and the library at Vista Grande. And so you'll see that we have been very diligent in selecting the projects and keeping the voters, uh, keeping our residents and keeping the, the uh, particularly the tax rates uh, very well managed over the course of the last several decades as, as we have implemented some of the new uh, projects and facilities that we need to in the community. But, so we've got general obligation bonds, we have revenue bonds that are available that essentially pledge utility revenues, street and highway revenue bonds, or excise and sales tax revenue bonds. 
Uh, the mayor and council is is aware, and I'm sure many of our community members are, that we have we have utilized the excise and sales tax revenue bonds more uh, predominantly than the other two. Uh, the public safety bond that was recently adopted or passed by the mayor and council that that essentially funded our public safety pensions that was an excise tax deal. We've done excise tax. Uh, uh, bonding for our wastewater expansion in the past and so it it is certainly a tool that I think that we will be recommending from a staff's perspective <coughs> to the mayor and council on selected projects <coughs> many of you know that we also have the ability to issue bonds under special districts and improvement districts we've had the city of Casa Grande has has had numerous improvement districts over the year currently we over the years that typically is going to improve uh, streets or, or, or run infrastructure such as sewer lines into an area of town that is underserved today um, and, and then ultimately the city backs the bonds and uh, we collect those from the users of that area the the property owners of that area we've not had a, a special district or improvement bond in, in a number of years but they are still a tool that is very uh, is, is very achievable and then lastly state agency or state support there's a variety of programs through WIFA, through other types of uh, what I consider to be water or wastewater type projects. There are some funding that may be available for streets, very little on, this, on the roadway infrastructure side. But ultimately, the city is well versed in, in the relationships that we have to maintain with the state agencies and the state support when we're looking at financing. I've talked a little bit about the pay-as-you-go funding methodology as we've, as we've moved through this. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've tried to break down these various uh, potential uh, funding sources based on legal purpose. You can see that any lawful or necessary purpose for pay-as-you-go, the characteristics are it's the least costly funded uh, funding method, primarily because you don't have to pay any interest on, on these, right? You're essentially, you're essentially using the funds that you have. Uh, this, the pay-as-you-go method will continue to be implemented in our CIP program. Uh, and, and I know it'll be supported by the mayor and council. Uh, uh, there may be some, even some additional opportunities for us to evaluate perhaps using other fund balances in lieu of, in lieu of uh, issuing bonds, but that's, that's a, a decision for another night. The limitations are that you have to have funding available to, to, to proceed, and, and yeah, really I think that is where we're at quite candidly on the crossroads with the amount of growth that we're seeing and the, the need for some of the um, uh, infrastructure improvements and expansions uh, I'm not sure that we could make it through make it to the to and maintain the level of service if we just if we were simply trying to fund it as a pay-as-you-go methodology uh, all projects are allowable and uh, given municipalities finances this approach is usually most applicable for, for smaller maintenance and improvement projects which is what is the philosophy we've we've maintained I'm going to spend a little time on the general obligation bonds, really just to familiarize those that are not familiar with them. Uh, they can be used for any lawful or necessary purpose. They are full faith and credit bonds. Uh, they're, sec they're secured by uh, unlimited property tax pledge. So essentially, we are, we are levying, we're levying taxes on the secondary assessed value of the property owners in the community to repay that debt and the debt service can be paid from a variety of, uh, of methodologies as long as your bond documents are structured as such, but, they could, but we have typically used property taxes to, to pay for uh, and service the debt on our general obligation bonds, but you can also use uh, enterprise revenues, water and sewer revenues and highway user revenues if you'd like to do so. Uh, generally, they're the lowest cost financing. Uh, that, that typically is driven by your bond rating and uh, we've, we've improved our bond rating over the years. We're a double A plus, and so we sit in a good position to utilize this financing tool. There are some limitations. Uh, obviously, it is subject to voter authorization. It, uh, any project must go to the voter to, uh, to allow capacity, and uh, pursuant to the Arizona Constitution and the Arizona Revised Statute, there are, there are various limits that have to be applied and utilized when you're looking at general obligation bonds. For example, 20% of the net, uh, net asset, uh, assessed limited property value for water, sewer, lighting, parks, open spaces, <coughs> recreational purposes, public safety, law enforcement, fire and emergency facilities and streets. So it's a pretty broad category for the 20%. So essentially the way that number is established is they look, 
our, our financial advisors, our finance team will look at our, our secondary assessed value. They'll apply the 20% rule to that. They'll tell you what your capacity is based on that. So as your community grows and your assessed value grows, obviously so does that 20% capacity. There is a, um, there is a 6%, a 6 rule uh, for all other purposes. But you, what you'll find is that the majority of the projects that we have recommended in the past and those that we'll be recommending tonight ultimately have fallen in the 20% category. This, this next slide just talks about some of the uh, types of projects. I, I think the Mayor and Council is familiar with what we've used our uh, general obligation proceeds to fund but you can see that it, it does really span uh, the gamut and, and ultimately can be used for practically all of, the, all of the various service levels that we provide. They're all, uh, the, you also have, and I talked just very briefly on this, the utility revenue bonds. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of depth because we're gonna focus on the geo bond tonight. But uh, certainly as we get into the continued discussion of the capital improvement program, we'll be talking uh, specifically about uh, uh, utility bonds as well as excise tax revenue bonds and potentially improvement rev uh, district bonds. I know that we've got a project in a specific area of town that uh, the developers are having some discussion with staff now about the potential of the city supporting a special improvement district. And then obviously the state agency options uh, as the Mayor and Council is aware, we do have a uh, current WIFA loan on the expansion of our wastewater treatment plant, but you also see the other Department of Transportation, the loans that uh, are available to uh, organizations, municipal organizations, as they're considering funding their capital improvements. So I talked just briefly about this just a minute ago, but this just summarizes uh, the, 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 the number of times that the city has gone out to our voters to ask for general obligation uh, capacity. Uh, the fire apparatus in 1984 and then 2006, 23 million 500 for public safety facilities, 4 million for library facilities, construction and improvements, and 19.5 for parks and recreation improvements. Uh, we have issued bonds in all of these. We've got a number of projects that have been finalized. Uh, I feel like we've done a very, very good job. Uh, the commitment that we had made to the voters in 2006 is that we would keep the secondary tax levy under a dollar fifty per hundred of assessed valuation we've we've the highest i can recall that we've been is roughly 68 cents and so uh in in any discussion that we have with the mayor and council we're certainly going to want to time projects and consider uh, uh various uh, bonding and the like uh, around that tax levy which, by the way, uh, based on some of the direction that we get tonight, as I mentioned, the plan would be to do a, a, a further analysis and ultimately come back with what I consider to be more detail on, on uh, projects, on potential timing of those projects, on various tax rates based on the level of assessed growth and so on and so forth. But with all that being say, said, Mr. Mayor and members of the council, and I know that I'm, I've not given you a minute to talk yet, I'm, I'm gonna try to wrap this up very, very rapidly because we've got the Youth Commission right behind me. Um, literally, where are they? They were just here, maybe they walked out. <laughs> um, we, uh, looking at our five-year CIP, uh, what, what staff elected to, to essentially attempt to do is, is really build what could, what could be a geobond question for our November 22 election that ultimately are uh, filled with projects that are very tangible, that are usable by the community. They're, they are amenities that, or, or various improvements that would benefit a greater portion of our community. It's the similar strategy that we utilized uh, in 2006. Incidentally enough, we had just done, we had, we, had, we had just finalized our parks master plan. We had, we had just done a community attitude survey so we could incorporate that. But the, the basis for these projects are essentially very similar to the philosophy of what we utilized when we went um, before our, our voters in 2006. But uh, what I'm going to do is provide a little more detail if I can on these projects specifically. So the general administration uh, is the city hall complex uh, and facility expansion, uh, and we're recommending $15 million. What that would, what that would include is uh, new facilities for both uh, HR, IT, and finance. 
uh, and as well as the potential of having some additional capacity for the expansion of this facility, perhaps, or even, even perhaps other facilities that may occur on our City Hall campus. Uh, the next uh, category is fire. The mayor and council has heard about these. I, you, you all know that we're paying it. We're doing a pay-as-you-go funding method for 503, but there's a need for us to evaluate both location as well as upgrades to station 501 and 502. And if, we, if you look into a five-year window and you consider the amount of growth that we're having, it's very likely that we would, we would be looking at the potential of another Station 505 that, that we could certainly include on a bond question. Uh, and I think just one element that I'd like to add to the, uh, for information to the council is that once the voters approve, if they approve these bonding question, the capacity can be used at any point. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be used in a five-year window. It ultimately can be used, it, it remains until it is used. Under Parks and Recreation, uh, and it ties very nicely to the Trails master uh, to the Parks and Recs master plan that was presented earlier. We've got community trail construction. Again, another project that we've been paying as you go, but as you know, you get little segments at $300,000 to $500,000 a year. What staff is recommending is $7 million to be allocated to this program to ultimately accelerate a trail system in the community, perhaps building trailheads and making those connection points that were discussed just briefly. And that would be based quite candidly on some of the results that we received from the parks uh, master plan that we're working on. Improvements at Dave White Park, which would really be uh, uh, a combination of improvements to the park itself. I, Steve and his team have done a fantastic job redoing many of the amenities there, but there's still some that need to be upgraded. The turf area probably can use a little bit of extra work, but more important, as the Mayor and Council is aware, we're building the recharge facility, and at least the overall concept that the Mayor and Council saw early on was that we would build an adaptive trail system around those around those uh, ponds, uh, perhaps with with some riparian types of act amenities that would go with that. So seven million to 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 th those improvements. The Ed Hooper Park and Paul Mason's improvements, uh, we've allocated 15 million. Um, it's probably going, as you build that out, again, it's, we would rely very heavily on the feedback that we get from our community on the park's master plan, but we know that we have a need today as an example for, for baseball fields, particularly for the youth programs. Uh, there's been a plan in place to, to, add, to add those fields. We've had some discussions about those going potentially somewhere adjacent to Dave White, but perhaps they go in this complex as well. Uh, it adds the aquatic center improvements that w was just mentioned a few minutes ago that potentially could add aquatic component to the rec center. And uh, it also um, brings into consideration some roadway improvements uh, for the mayor and council's discussion tonight. Those include the 5th Street uh, pier, uh, square improvements. We talked about the, those improvements a number of years ago. We've not been able to find the financing, but would be a fantastic amenity for our community. Downtown street improvements, again, we've got a plan that needs to be implemented. This would allocate $5 million to that. Trucker Road improvements, this is specifically focused for the area between Rodeo Road and McCartney Road around the Union High School. Uh, we know that there's some development activity there, but uh, that will likely uh, finish what would be the western half of the road. But but certainly uh, would like to, to, to be able to get that project accelerated if that did not transpire, and also McCartney Road improvements. And what staff has focused on really is Treckle East to the interstate, but certainly uh, we, with $25 million, we could potentially begin to go west from there as well. Again, there's development that will happen in that corridor, but really it's just a starting point for, what, uh, is, uh, for an allocation of funding uh, to, to accelerate those projects. And so... With that, Mr. Mayor and members of council, I know I've talked about 27 minutes too long, but I'll pause and try to entertain any questions. Mr. Powell. I just, I had a question. <clears throat> the, uh, the Dave White, let's see, the, the um, those are seven million, Aquatic Center, seven million, City Hall, seven million. Ed Hooper's 15. Yeah, 15 million, Ed Hooper and the Mason. Mm-hmm. Okay. That answers we, my question. Okay. Anybody else? Matt? So, Larry, um, just to be clear, th this is a general amount of money. And, and like you said earlier, it wouldn't be, once it's voted on, if it's, if it's passed, we wouldn't take it all at one time. It'd be taken as we're ready to do the projects. We wouldn't take the $115 million on day one if that should happen. 
correct? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Herman, your answer is, the answer is yes. Uh, we would ultimately issue numerous bonds over numerous years that at the end of that period would uh, amount somewhere to 115 million if we achieve all these projects. But again, I know that the mayor and council has always considered the tax levy to service these debts, this, these debt payments, and it would, it would be a, ultimately a, a, a project that would be multi-year that where we can maintain some level of, of secondary assessed uh, levy. And to be clear, like the Ed Hooper, the 15 million, there's nothing specific, really, it's just toward a general area, but the, the, the people at, at focus group meetings, like if they wanted a, a pool there, a skate park there, a splash pad there, that was where that would come in. And we would allocate this money towards certain amenities, correct? Mr. Mayor, Council Member Herman, we, it, at least, it's staff's opinion that we are in uh, some need of baseball, of baseball, additional baseball amenities, right? Uh, softball fields, baseball fields, and uh, for, for the youth primarily. And so certainly we could accelerate a project, but ultimately I would tell you that my thoughts would be that we would finish the, marks, the, the parks master plan, that we would begin to assess the types of amenities that they'd be asking for in Ed Hooper Park particularly, or around Paul Mason Sportsplex, and then we would put together a, uh, a plan based on the feedback that we've gotten. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. thank you. Jeff, go ahead. So Larry, my understanding is we're possibly looking at four different uh, things that the voters would vote on, am I correct? And are each of these bullets one of the four? It's, it's very likely that each of these bullets would be its own individual question. That is part of the discussion that, based on the feedback we get tonight from Mayor and Council, going back to our financial advisors and our bond council to talk strategically about how we craft these questions. But I would say, practically speaking, uh, you, you, it, it, will, it will at least be a minimum of four questions. All right. So one question I have, Larry, is I would rank some of these as nice to have and then if, can you flip it to the next page? Yes, sir. I would rank Truckle Road and McCartney as necessities. Okay. Could we possibly run the risk of getting nice to have things voted yes and awesome. have to hold off on McCartney Road and Truckle, which are, I think are essential because of the potential for accidents out at the high school area there? There, it, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Council Member Lavender, uh, the, the point is well taken. What I would say is that as part of the evaluation, based on the final list that, that the direction we get this evening, we will likely break these down into questions. But there is a, always a potential that unless you ask one question for all of the projects, right. which we unlikely would do, mm -hmm. that there will be some projects that get supported by the community while the need, and we, we feel that the need may be greater than others where those may fail. You know, ultimately, the point about the work that needs to be done around Treckle and McCartney is well taken. Uh, from a staff perspective, if we did not get additional fu uh, funding through a ge general obligation bond, we would be looking at other financing mechanisms to try to accelerate that. That's what this re recommendation does, is it accelerates right. some level of development and our improvements in that area. And I'd also say, because I know the chief sitting back there, the fire, Stations 501 and 502 are critical as well, given uh, some of the concerns that were presented to us at an earlier meeting. Donna, did you have a question? Well, just to kind of piggyback on what, what Jeff said, I think that, you know, having been around for the last one, a lot of people, you know, were like, you know, it's been 12 years before we got our community center. and right. so. The priority and obviously the police department was a priority and then the library so I I think in the scheme of things when we look at this to make sure that the public understands the timeline and priority where these can happen like Matt said it's not going to happen all at once but the priority basis is just that I think that that's what we're going to have to really be clear about Mr. Powell you had one more comment you go, did make. you have Lisa? one go ahead, go ahead. And, and I'm going to follow up on what you both um, talked about. It seems like one of the biggest issues right now when you talk to community members is the, are the roads, traffic. And so um, I agree. I think those are critical. And I wanted, I, I'm just curious, is that enough? Is that, an, I mean, I, there's never enough. I, I, get, I look at Larry, he's like, yeah, right. Um, but, you know, do we need, it, 
is there any way we you know increase that amount to get to the levels that are needed i mean we have tremendous growth and that is literally the number one issue when i talk to people is traffic roads and what are we doing about it yes uh, mr mayor councilwoman fitzgibbons um, I, I again i certainly understand that and and i think just to give a little bit of perspective in the non-geo bond bucket if you will mm -hmm. where we're looking at other other financing sources mm -hmm. other bonding sources you know that that bucket is 200 million 300 million okay. to for some of these additional improvements that that I, I know our community is going is is going to expect in the very near term we specifically we typically have not yeah, fund right roadway right. improvements out of geo bonds in the past but i felt like it was a uh, an avenue to accelerate getting some of these key uh, corridors established okay. but the most important point that i want to make is that there could be a scenario where many of these projects are are cannot be completed with the capacity that we're asking for um, in these geo bonds in those cases we would use items such as development impact fees and other construction sales tax and other revenue sources that we would have within our city coffers to offset that variance okay thank you Mr. Bell. larry i think one of the best solutions for the traffic and the growth and all of those things was to push trickle road all the way to to val vista and get it done and some of those developers along through there had said they would contribute to it because until it's there they really aren't going to be able to take advantage of it but uh, if that would really be a big uh, make everybody in town happy instead of having to go to Pinnell or or uh, Treckle or whatever I mean Treckle you could go right on up straight right Mr. Mayor uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Powell we staff has staff has been engaged with the developers in that area about the potential of expanding that roadway there are a couple of what I consider to be cutout parcels that we we have some challenges with but I do envision that um, that 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 segment of roadway from from uh, specifically from McCartney to Val Vista is something that we will see in within the next five years uh, hopefully before that uh, again, it's, it's working with the development community to ensure that we've got the right of way and then developing a financing plan behind that. That is a project that we ultimately could add to this if that would be the mayor and, uh, pleasure of the mayor and council. Uh, um, it was not one that I felt like we had advanced enough within, within the study or had enough information from uh, the development community to add. But, but agree with you wholeheartedly about that segment of the roadway. Thank you, Larry. All right, so Larry, and what you're looking for then is just really some direction from council in terms of these and these projects, yes. And you know, to Mr. Powell's point, you could add two options on that Truckle Road improvement, which would be to take it all the way to Val Vista. Right. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other? I mean, I, I think, I think these look pretty good. I think they're pretty well thought out, and obviously, there's not a lot of detail, but that's not what we're looking for here. Right. It's just to, because now then we can put together the funding packages and then that we can see what that impacts in terms of taxes. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll begin to do our work on it then, Mr. Mayor, and, right. and schedule a future study session to, to disseminate that information. But ultimately, what I'm hearing is that the council's somewhat supportive of, or is supportive of, at least pursuing the potential of a November 2022 geo bond election of some sort. Yes. I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think, I think okay. we're all nodding. So, perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Now, I think we have a presentation from the youth commission. <laughs> Are you guys out there? Can anybody hear me? Does anybody want to give them a nod to come in? <laughs> come on down. All right. That thirty-minute presentation now has been carved to twenty. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> should we get chairs real quick, Larry? Or we normally do? Or should we? Grab those ones in the front there and pull them up. Are we going down there? Are we, we can see. No, I think we can go right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they can stay down there. 
Have them face this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're cute at that age, aren't they? <laughs> He's kidding. Some, yeah, Anthony, Some sit of right in front yeah. of that podium. <laughs> That's true. Not all. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Do they? Do they? Did they bring their own? There you go. Or are they going to use ours? <laughs> I need to stand up to see. <laughs> <laughs> you said you I, you I didn't see me. So no. <laughs> Is that where we put our chairs up so I can see it? Right. <laughs> Okay. Okay, are you guys ready? Are you all ready? Are you ready for this? <laughs> so first we would like to start off by saying that the commission is very proud of our ladies. Award for, oh, which is the Community Service Award from the Chamber of Commerce for 2021. We would like to thank Councilwoman McBride for nominating our organization. And we are very glad for this recognition of all of our hard work on the commission. Absolutely. Um, and we would next like to discuss one of our um, headline uh, accomplishments that we have made in the past year and one of our upcoming projects that is one of our main projects the heart of Casa Grande scholarship contest oh, hold on let's do the introduction real quick oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we <had no> absolutely <laughs> correct Anthony I am Kendra Bray advisor for the Youth Commission I'm Mila Lopez a commissioner I'm Emma Anila also a commissioner I am Alexis O'Neill, and I am also a commissioner. Can you guys tell me what school? School. <laughs> Go back. Remember, we practice this on Saturday. Name, school, year. Um, I'm Mila Lopez again. Um, I'm a freshman at Union, and this is my first year on the commu commission. Okay. I'm Emma Anila. I'm a commissioner. I'm a freshman as well and go to Casa Grande Union High School. I'm Alexis O'Neill. I am a sophomore at Casa Grande Union High School, and this is my first year as a commissioner. My name is Elle Wiles. I'm a freshman at Union High School, and I'm the public relations officer. My name is Delaney Dickey. I am a senior at Vista Grande High School, and I am the current president. I'm Anthony Amato. I'm also with Delaney in the loud minority over here. We, I go to Vista. I'm a freshman, and I am the secretary for the commission. I am Gracie Anila. I'm the vice president, and I'm a sophomore at Union, and I'm the vice president. Hi, my name is Mia. I'm the se I'm a senior at Castigan Union High School, along with the treasurer of the commission. Hi, I'm Alora. I go to Castigan Union, um, and this is my fourth year on the commission as a senior. My name is Phineas Lenahan. I'm in eighth grade, and I go to Legacy, and I'm a commissioner. And this is my first year on the youth commission. I'm Landon Molia. I am a freshman at Union High School, and this is my second year on the commission. Hello, my name is T. Ray Lewis. I'm a junior at Casa Grande Union High School, and this is my second year on the commission. I am Crystal Villegas, and I'm another adult advisor. <clears throat> so like Anthony was talking about, this year we are looking forward to doing our second year of Heart of Casa Grande Scholarship. Similar to last year where we did the scholarship based on the applicants finding their place in Casa Grande that they think embodies the spirit of Casa Grande. We are sticking with the similar prompt this year. We are continuing to do our three separate categories, video, art, and essay. We are hoping to have that publicized in these upcoming weeks, the sooner the better as anything. Along with this project, we are hoping to release videos that have been made by our commissioners that say different parts of Casa Grande that they think embodies Casa Grande. They're split up into different categories, which we edited together to hopefully be, rele be released to these schools. How that's done, we're still thinking and working out the kinks. But other than that, that is what we're working on for now in regards to Heart of Casa Grande. 
The amount of the scholarship this year is $500 for each of the three categories. Very nice. We weren't going to ask the council members what year in high school they were? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I think next we have um, Gracie just talking about our shred days that we do an biannually. Um, we had our first fall day of shredding in October this year, and we raised over $1,700 with that. It's one of our more known events, and our next for the spring day of shredding, um, we're hoping for April 30th for the next shred day. And then we have um, Mia Jackson with our Garden of Sunshine. <laughs> um, so we've always done a Garden of Sunshine every year, and this year we're working on a sign being made for to go in front of it, and yeah. And as always, I am once again here to remind you about our upcoming Hallmark event, the Arizona Youth Government Summit, which we will be hosting here in Casa Grande at the Rec Center on April 23rd of this year. Um, it snuck up on us very quickly. We are very uh, making lots of headway in that planning, though. Um, as far as outreach goes, we have been contacting multiple offices for speakers. We're glad to have many local officials speaking, one of them being, of course, Councilman McBride um, and the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Um, of course, if there's anybody here with particular contacts, particularly those who he may call on a first name basis, I'm, I'm not talking to the mayor here, um, who may be able to connect us with certain senators for our keynote speaker, we um, are totally not asking that you use your connections to help us there. But we may be asking that. Um, <laughs> As far as the finances of the event go, we are very happy and appreciative to be getting multiple sponsorships and donations from um, individuals and organizations as well as businesses throughout the community. And again, we are definitely not shamelessly asking for anybody in this room who may be able to um, offer their kind hearts and wallets to the Arizona Youth Government Summit. Um, again, those checks can be made out to the Casperian Youth Commission. Um, we are very excited to be bringing youth commissions, councils, and boards from all across the state to our great city to showcase not only our city, but um, the t our commission, which has been a main player on the stage of youth, youth empowerment for the past nearly 20 years now. Not to date it, but <laughs> uh, um, we are... We are very glad to be having this event here and extremely um, hopeful for it. And we know that we will be able to bring this great event to our city with the support of the mayor and council. Is, do you have anything to say on that? I would also like to give much credit to Delaney, who has been planning this. Does anyone else have anything to say? <laughs> and I will give the mic to our president to conclude. <laughs> Well, we are, we are also going to move forward with uh, trying to get some ad hoc positions on some of the commissions, which I think you've seen some of that communication going out. So we'll be reaching out to you all for some suggestions potentially on that. Mr. Lavender? You know, I just want to say to all of you, it is for especially the union students, it's horrible you couldn't go to school today. And all of you are student leaders, and I suggest tomorrow morning you knock on your principal's door and ask him how you can help uh, with things that are going on at the school, how you can lead, uh, uh, get dialogue going to get this resolved so all of you can stay in school and be safe at school. You're an impressive group of students. I commend you for what you're doing, and I think you're part of the solution out there. So I encourage you to get involved. Yeah, go ahead. And, and yeah, I just, it's been a tough year and a half, two years, and I know, you know, all of you, it's just so nice to see your motivation and drive and energy to keep on with your leadership you know, role in the community. So we really appreciate it. And I know sometimes it must get frustrating, you know, when you see some of your fellow, you know, um, you know students, friends that aren't, don't have the energy. And, but I, I just really appreciate with how busy all of you are and committed to school and everything to take on this leadership role. It's really important and it means so much to our community. And I know so many of you do so many other things. And so to, to continue and, and serve on this council um, is, is very important to us. And we, we appreciate it, we take it serious, and we listen to 
um, you know, what, what you what have to say. Yeah, what you have to say. <laughs> we have to, right? With 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 that one over there. We no, <laughs> no but no, seriously. <laughs> thank you, thank you. For <coughs> everything you do. Mr. Powell. My turn. <clears throat> you the man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say we're so proud to have this group. This started off a number of years ago with just a small group of people and, and uh we're, our community is blessed to have you people that are taking ownership in, in making decisions and representing the schools and the city. And I just want to tell you that you're go, all going, going up. And I know one of your dads are sitting out there. I can see him right now. But uh, Byron. <laughs> and I just want to uh, congratulate every one of you for being part of this. And, and keep it up, keep it up. Just as you go upward, just take more responsibility all the time and show them how it's done. Donna? You know, I think when this started many years ago, as Anthony said, not that it ages me, but mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we really were looking at is we want young people to come back and stay in our community. And I think Kenda and Crystal are a prime example both of them were on the Youth Commission as students when I started this. And it's amazing to me to see them as advisors. And that's what this is all about. And so it's, it's something that you will, 5, 10, 15 years from now, hopefully come back and continue. This is leadership at its best. And it's only as good as what you make it. And as Mr. Lavender said, um, quite frankly, a lot of us were sickened by what happened Friday and the fact that you were not in school today. Um, but that's what sets you aside from the others. And you're going to need to walk back in there with your head high. And the few that were disruptive, don't let that stop you. Let that be a challenge to you. Matt? So yeah, I, I get the opportunity to work very closely with them. And I want to say this group this year has been especially resilient. Um, they've been through a lot in the last two years as students, as young people with Zoom meetings, non-Zoom meetings, this and that, cancellations, and here they are. And, and this year, they really started focusing on more being um, towards the government function of, of what they do, along with some community service. But the, the Youth Government Summit is for youth commissions around the state, including tribal, uh, tribal nations surrounding us. And they've all been invited. And we hope, you know, we hope that they all are able to come. Um, also, Crystal and Kendra have been volunteer advisors for the past almost 10 years now, and they're doing a great job. And they informed us the other day that they're gonna hang up their advisor hats. Um, so if anyone else would like to be a volunteer advisor for the Youth Commission, we are accepting applications, <laughs> not to replace them, but just to follow in their footsteps. Um, and we have a couple in mind that we're working with, but I just wanted to definitely recognize those two because they give up their Saturdays, their nights, their weekends, and they both have young kids of their own but they just really love helping the community. And it started from them being on the commission. Um, another great thing I see, we have a great mix of all sorts of people from different schools, uh, from eighth grade all the way up to seniors. So we're pretty happy. Like Mr. Moglia there started as an eighth grader. He's in his second year now. Got another eighth grader. And, and I want to embarrass, I'm not going to embarrass her, but put her on the spot a bit with Miss Laura Linehan. Shared something with me about one of her college applications. Maybe you could tell us about what happened when you put the Youth Commission on that application? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to uh, put you on the spot, but it's a great story. <laughs> You're fine. Um, I was talking to my interviewer and this... Oh, sorry. I was talking to my interviewer and they said that being involved in like youth government and the Youth Commission really put my application over the spot. So I got accepted mm -hmm. into the college. Excellent. <laughs> and it's a pretty cool college too, so... I mean, cooler than ASU even. Yeah. Oh. Out of state. Is that it's out of state. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. It's yeah. Well, do you want to tell them, Laura, or can you tell them? It's Cornell. Cornell. Yeah. Very nice. Wow. Not too shabby. No. Wow. 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 But it, it just goes to show that you you guys putting effort out, you get back for it, not for yourself, but for the community. And again, like Miss Donna said, we always encourage you to come back as you know, to Casa Grande.
because we're building all these great jobs and parks and trails, so that'll be even better when you come back. And you guys are a big part of that. The Youth Commission, in fact, one of the big reasons we have a community recreation center after all that time. So when you guys, before you guys, a lot of you were even born, but we started way back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just and just to finally say, I think you know we are super proud, which has been said several times up here. Super proud of all of you. Uh, I would encourage you to continue in leadership. It's uh, it, it's needed today more than ever, and uh, I think that you embody that that leadership and that drive. So I would encourage you to continue, uh, no matter where you go, what you do. But again, to Matt's and Donna's point, please come back. One, one more. Oh, if, if I you, may. Mm -hmm. um, Sure, the, of course I say no. <laughs> the, what they've been doing a lot too, to, to some conversation we had is we have already had a plan to meet with the superintendent at one of our meetings from the high school district. Unfortunately, it hadn't worked out because of COVID and stuff so far, but they, they do have a plan to meet with her at the meeting. And also we were talking about uh, more activity participating with the school board because we talked a lot about government functions and how the school board does that, the city council does this. So I know there's a lot in the works for that and and no more timely than you know just right now so Later that young man's going to be on tv yeah. <laughs> also um anthony alluded it to earlier but they are trying to get a hold of um and they've got a hold of his office with senator mark kelly mm -hmm. to speak at their event and so we've had a few connections and i mentioned that sometimes the mayor gets to talk to him on the phone so he's going to shamelessly ask him again I'm, i'll ask both senators how's that We'll take one or they'll take one or both. Okay. And again, this is all a student driven conference. Right. They're asking for help from people, but they are planning, they are they inviting people and they are doing it themselves. So we are very excited. And also need to mention our uh, our um, staff advisor Jeff Molner from yeah. the community services department who helps us a lot a lot too. So <laughs> and Mr. Hardesty, you heard about the sign that we're working on. See me I just gotta Put it out there in public. He does know. He's he's been a lot of help on it. I'm just giving him a hard time. We also, as a commission, want to thank Mr. Matt Herman for <laughs> help with all the time and the commitment that is dedicated to the commission. We are a rowdy bunch of kids, and we are demanding, and so it's definitely a task for everybody, Mr. Herman, Kendra, and Crystal. So we just want to thank all three of our great advisors <laughs> for being able to put up with us and all of our ambitious ideas. Yeah. Are any of you going to, uh, to U of A? <laughs> <laughs> I see a bunch of no. <laughs> Even if they did, they probably wouldn't tell me. <laughs> All right. We just encourage them to go anywhere and further their education. Anywhere. All right. That's well, great. great. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you great guys job. so much. Great job. That was refreshing. I love the shirts, too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are great. It says Youth Commission. Lead it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well done. The it. The it. That's what yes. Said the other day. <laughs> it's all about the it. <laughs> All right, the uh, study session has ended and we will reconvene at five minutes after seven. So.